Welcome to my lecture online. If you liked the, the previous video, you're going to like this one as well. We have the same problem. We're still trying to find the period of oscillation, but we're going to use method two. We're going to use the energy equation that has to do with potential and kinetic energy. Essentially, what we want to get is that the potential energy max that we start with is going to be equal to the potential energy at any point in time plus the kinetic energy at any point in time. So we need to find these three components of the equation in order to find the period of oscillation. So essentially what we have here is we have two vertical tubes. We have water up to this level right here, the equilibrium point. Then we push the water down. Notice the two tubes are connected to a little, with a little horizontal tube here. And we're supposed to ignore the mass in the two horizontal tubes. We push the water down, the water goes up to here, then we'll let go and the water will oscillate back and forth, and we're trying to find that period of oscillation. Again, there should be no restrictions on, on friction or no restrictions on the flow of fluid going back and forth between the two tubes. So, first of all, the maximum potential energy. So, the, when the water is at the equilibrium point, we have the water like this. But first, when we start out, we have the water like this. Essentially, we can see that the water in this portion right here will end up over here when things get to equilibrium point. So essentially, the potential energy is taking this mass of water and pushing it up to this position. And you can see that the average height difference will be equal to the height of this right here, H. So we can see that potential energy max is equal to M, the mass contained within this much water times g times the height and the height difference of course is going to be in this case h because this water will go from here to here and this water will go from here to there so you can see that it's simply a difference of h for all that water so it's mgh and all we have to do here is figure out what m is equal to and starting out with the definition that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume the mass is equal to the density times the volume so in this case that's equal to the density times the cross-sectional area times the height, h. Plugging that in here, this is equal to the density times a times h instead of mass times g times h, which essentially is going to be equal to the density times the cross-sectional area times g times h squared. This is the maximum potential energy in the system before we let things go. So the potential energy at any point in time is going to be the distance of the top part of this away from the equilibrium point. So the potential energy as a function of position y is going to be equal to the same thing, but instead of h, we're going to have a y. So it's density times a times g times y squared. So now we have the second part of this equation. Now we still need to get the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is going to be equal to one-half times the mass, now the mass in one of these tubes, no, actually the mass in both tubes. So it'll be one half times two times the mass in each tube times velocity squared. Now we're going to again take the mass and write it as density times volume. And notice that the one half cancels out to two, so this cancels out to two, and mass is density times volume, so density times volume of one of the tubes, because we're ready to care of the two, times V squared, and the volume of one of the tubes that can be written as density times cross-sectional area times big H, big H is a distance from here to the equilibrium point, times V squared. And now we have the third component of that energy equation. So let's plug those three components in here and see what we get. So the potential energy max is going to be the density times the cross-sectional area times G times H squared is equal to the potential energy at any in any position, which is density times area times g times y squared, and then plus kinetic energy would be plus the density times cross-section area times big H times v squared. Now notice all components have a density and a cross-section area that cancels out, so the density cancels out, the cross-section area cancels out, so we're left with g h squared is equal to g y squared plus h v squared. And now we're going to solve that for v. So we have h v squared is equal to g 
h squared minus g y squared. Then we have v squared is equal to a factor out of g, and I'll bring down the h. I have g over h times h squared minus y squared. And finally, when I take the square root, I have v is equal to the square root of g over h times h squared minus y squared. Now, this should look very familiar to you because when we do the same thing with the spring and the mass, we then find that v is equal to the square root of k over m times the amplitude squared minus x squared. Notice we have a very, oh, I have a parenthesis, we have a very similar equation, which means that the square root of k over m is the same as the square root of g over h in this case. Now, keep in mind that the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m, which means in our case, that must then be equal to the square root of g over h. I think my pen is dying. Grab another pen. And we know that the omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, so that means that 2 pi times the frequency is equal to this. So we can say that 2 pi times the frequency is equal to the square root of g over h, which means that the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of g over h. And finally, we then convert that to the period. The period, which is equal to 1 over the frequency, is therefore equal to 2 pi times the square root of h over g, which is the exact same answer that we got on the previous video, which means again that the period is a function of the square root of the initial height of the water from the bottom to the equilibrium point. All the other things are constant, g is a constant, pi is a constant, it only is a function of the square root of the initial height of the water in each of the columns. The same result that we got in the previous video. And you can see the relationship between all these equations in various forms. Again, we got the same thing. And that is how it's done. It's a beautiful thing once you figure it out. <laughs> ah, all right.